Corporation Defense Strategies for you. For organizing this important event, it's a great tradition. I'm very really proud of such uh, events because these are those events which provide us a platform to achieve our views, understand each other, and similarly the effects of all stakeholders to move forward in a pragmatic manner for the people which we build after the entire forces as such. The joint success of these sandals actually lies at the end of it by the takeaways and real rules that we derive out of it. And I'm sure there will be plenty in quality and quantity as we finish this seminar tomorrow. Let me begin by saying that a mission of security, as long well as it does not have to compromise a fundamental national interest to avoid war. I was able to do so if challenged, maintained it by war. And therefore, in the light of the strategic construct and the dynamics of the prevailing border situation, I think the seminar is well timed to focus on our war fighting capabilities, which are still ahead of by the mechanized forces. And based on the theme, if I may say, of collaborative convergence for the future indigenous defense capability of the mechanized forces. My chief has already highlighted the role of mechanized forces, not only in war fighting, but also the deriving victory for the nation. I would say that the veterans' forces as such continue to be a veteran of war in peace and a force of decision in war. Why? Because it is the veterans' forces which spearhead the mine arm speed. And it's the mine arm speed that produces effects in battle. And I talk of command arm scheme, it is both on ground and in air. Particularly our new combat army aviation attack helicopters that we look forward to it. And therefore, not only this, Mercury's forces have also compelled us as far as joining us of operations is concerned. They are also the harbingers of modern technology into the combat force. And therefore, there are many other issues which bring to the boundaries the role of mechanized forces in any future conflict across the entire spectrum. Because a mobile lethal platform ensures victory at least time and at least cost. That's the acme of war fighting for the future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what are the mechanized forces capability building? I would say mechanized forces capability building is like a marathon. It's not a sharp sprint. And therefore, it requires an institutionalized long term perspective, maybe next 30 to 40 years. We have to force in the future. A dynamic and long status quo disposition to develop with times, with technologies, and changes in the war fight. A collaborative convergence of all stakeholders to make it happen. And above all, in the present era, a sense of perpetual optimism in a budgetary constrained environment. I think the world is the the DGLF and the Metalized Forces with our immense satisfaction to have the world in long term in management perspective, a mechanized force in terms of uh, policy statement, a mechanized force of strategy and capability of living roadmap, including operations for the future, going up in the next 30 to 40 years. I think consider this as a Bible, as a focused approach of an institutionalized mechanism to move ahead 
and achieve our thermal returns at each stage. Reviews will take place, but the destination is well defined. We are looking for a balance uh, policy on which we will continue to upgrade our legacy in service equipment as well as look at certain fleet replacements which need to be done for the prevention of the equipment and also address the issues of suspense and works that are coming. We are all very aware that the fair amount of success and outcomes have happened as far as the operation and clean uh, operation is concerned in terms of the flat pack concentrate approach. We build a new pillar and a life with P72 in all aspects. In terms of mentality, we got the latest EMCS already fitted, most of it, and the other one of it. It's going to be a great, great danger. We have the commander common meeting site, which is the reality today. We are going in for uh, higher power rate ratios in terms of our 1000 pass power engine. Part from China, the 1000 which we are going from the OEM is already clear the tracks. Another 1000 we are looking at the industrial and the make, make, it, uh, make project. So, I will keep we are getting the latest PRA Mark II at Power with India, indigenous to the reality already. We are getting the smoke plane, the charter, anti-thermal, anti-laser. And many other such improved versions, including the make, when we look at that, the improved ammunition, the different skills from the industry, and improved band balance. We also have a digitization, which is important uh, for the future of our arms, net centric, water that we will fight in nuclear network with all players in the vacuum. And we are going for the DCH, and we are going at looking at certain situational related systems. Similarly, for the PID, we are looking at upgrades, far from the OEM, a large number coming from the industry. We are looking at active production systems, we are looking at better guns, we are looking at auxiliary power units, EC, individual underlying uh, processing equipment for uh, default emissions. We are looking at the uh, next generation uh, and the uh, two branch material system. Similarly, for the BMP, which was technologically again aging. We have reviewed our quantity and our priorities, and the limited quantity we have already done in for an advanced armament suit, including fire control systems and tagging systems. We are already processing a better engine for a higher power to weight ratios, digital control harness. We have updated the sighting systems of the, all the crews, the driver of the commander. So, what I want to say is, the legacy fleet is being technologically upgraded so that the gap between when we got this fleet to when we get into all the 25, 27, the next fleet, our combat overmatch, our combat potential is not value to the war Not only that, some of the with that, are the FIC very aggressive. These are going to be the biggest game changes for the Indian defense industry ecosystem to come. And I'm convinced about it, and I speak with a lot of conviction. I told you, in the number 15, I'll share the same thing. And I see we will not fall. We got in for the UI, but the 16th, we shouldn't be alive. November 16, we run with it in a, in a exemplary manner, the UI, 
and we will have to be able to Sometimes they think it's a little more elevation, but it will not fall, and we are very shocked and confident. You will hear the FIC be going into the next level, that is the same thing we are being asked to go and formulate the DPI. And from the FIC, we will derive a potential capability to fight our future wars in the Thunder platforms again uh, in the state of our equipment based on pragmatic and doable to us. It is going to happen. So, the policy is concerned, we are there on the 8th of November after the foundation of the Strategic Partnership Group, which happened in May in the BP 16, we are issued to IFI. It's a family of things. And if you have a look at the RFI part 2, it's a very pragmatic uh, QR which is based on proper line mature technologies which are existing. Because we want to take a standard approach and a realistic approach to the examination. Because both these projects are time critical for us as far as fleet management is concerned, and we want them to be created in the free army in the time frame of 2005 to 2007. Let me also put it here. The certain applications which have been conveyed in the press on the FRC. FRCB is meant to replace the T72, which are aging, which came in 1979, are being upgraded, but they need to be replaced by the Federation X platform. They are not meant to scuffle either the upgrades which are planned, nor the Arjun, but it's mentioned in certain corners. Arjun, Mark 1, as it matures and gets fully operationalized, when we consider Arjun Mark 2, the commitment of this two regiment span provided, it goes through an integrated uh, trial with all the upgrades as well. So we will look at the entire field as such. In terms of business for the industry, 2,610 over 1,700 uh, of the FIC over 1,700 of the past city. And its associated uh, other platforms, supported platforms, and you know the cost of these platforms better than me, would not only really make good business this thing. But the most important part of this is we are looking for the same OEM to take care of the entire life cycle management, including periodic upgrades that come up in its lifetime, all sustenance issues, all individual solutions coming from the OEM. And therefore, it makes good operational sense for us and it makes good business sense also for the industry uh, as such. The reasons the defense IQ global audit, the global audit greater market survey report 2017 has mentioned India amongst the top countries and I thought which presents the greatest potential of growth of the AFEs and will be targeted as a priority for over the next 10 years. It's a de facto acknowledgement of a very vibrant, enthusiastic, and credible Indian private industry. It's a match by the recent government policy and realization views and the initiatives taken by the service headquarters. I show you with equal passion and commitment we are supporting the private industry and our future ventures in a collaborative manner with time sensitivity, cost sensitivities, and levels built in time. Let me also state, when I look at the fleet, that the utility of the force with the derivation of its employability, its deployability, and its capability. And therefore, the future of the fighting vehicles 
and have to be put away. A giant weak and our operational responsibility across the entire sector on all of us, like the chief I mentioned. So personality, maintainability and sustainability because we are important factors. And therefore, we have exercise forces as in the now, as far as we now. We look at the veteran space capability essentially being based on the medium class of MVDs and ICDs, duly supported, duly supported with lighter platforms like a light tank and the weak ICDs and APCs for the versatility and building specific payoffs like in higher degree areas where to have those multiplication to act. And therefore, our organization fundamentals are based on certain facets. The first is that we are driven by a vision and a long-term free perspective, which is holistic, realistic, and time sensitive export office. Secondly, we are looking at prioritized acquisition based on value and vulnerability analysis for the future with judicious scaling to address our imperatives. Some of the scalings you have seen, uh, there are uh, upgrades that we've taken. Selectively we've taken certain uh, quantity. We also shift from the traditional iron tangle that has been become busted by tech now and needs to be removed or just by our protection of water. We need to look at the family. We need to look at agility. We need to look at survivability. We need to look at adaptability. We need to look at affordability. We need to look at sustainability of the force. We also have to be pragmatic when we look at our right sizing and balancing street modernization versus street replacement versus street expansion. The balance has to come up so that it manifests in time within the, uh, within the budgetary constraint and which meets the more importantly the operation uh, imperatives of the Indian Army. Also another three factor which we are sensitive to is the short evolution cycle or the time sensitive. <coughs> the time period between the concept and the product has to be shorter than the technological cycle of the game. Similarly, when you use a product, the time cycle between building the product and the fitness of the product has also to be compressed. It has to be modular, prompted, and the ability to be fitted in at a free running level or at the core level will stop it. Otherwise, the time that it takes at the time the that will be certain. It loses its operational edge in terms of technology and technology damage. We can still be fit with that we get. Our modernization strategy is better of five inheritors. And I would say uh, the acronym is SUBRO, S U V R O. S stands for sustained current ratings and overcome voids. U is for upgrade existing systems for technology relevance. B is for better new capabilities and access new technologies and ideas, all to replace obsolete and broad service life equipment. And O is to optimize made in India, SP models and IDPM. All simultaneously in a well-balanced manner with new prioritization being done. And to that extent, when we look at technology where we must have a compatible match, we look at the quality and advanced type of board system. We are aware that we will make an advanced ammunition with higher DOP, drums, 
missiles, predator mission missiles. There are only vectors for multi-grade survivability and operation systems, like the active protection system, which is also being off with spread of data in India. We look at signature management, enhanced security and maneuverability, formal chassis design, model approach, for a variety of platforms and technology synergy across the platforms, info management and situation awareness and power and digitization, and reduced logistics, sustainability, and modularity as such. We are on the way forward to this capability building. I think there are three imperatives, or three pillars on which it must be built. Firstly, in the aspect of equal ownership and a non segmented approach to capability building. The user, the private industry, the government partners, the academia, all have to synergize their efforts in time and space and evolve and move forward together to make it happen. Two, we need to bridge the gap between promised capabilities and manifestation of project. It has to be time critical technology, competitive cost, sensitive, quality assurance, and its benefits. And lastly, it has to be a progressive integrated loop in which you upgrade the fleet, you induct a new system, when you induct it, you see to its 32 years or 40 years of life, at what stage what upgrades are coming up, that means a spiral approach, for which you want to you have to invest in RMB at that particular stage, not after it comes into service. So that at each intervention you are giving it a fuller technologically to let it remain as one of the top line tags as such. And then you need to attend a very large review in science and technology projects to be undertaken for the duration of the next system system. I conclude by saying that ladies and gentlemen, the future, there are a lot of important and key projects of the mechanized forces and resources in your uh, hand forward moving together to make it happen. And I'm sure we will definitely follow on our goals and move forward with diligence and effectiveness. In the end, I wish the seminar the very best and hope you have some stimulating and objective sessions. Jai Thank you. Next we have a special guest for the panel, who is a lady.